You've read in section 3.1, the very first section of chapter 3, about the derivative um, being a function. So we've learned derivative is, derivative is another word for slope of a tangent line. It's another word that we can apply to the idea of the instantaneous rate of change of a function. So I wanted to just give you a little visual of this. Um, what we have here on the screen is a graph of the cubic function. Um, it's really, you can see the equation for the function up there in the upper right hand corner, but it's not, honestly, not terribly important about what function this is. I've put a point on the graph of our function, which is a point that I can move along the curve, thusly. Right. What I want to do is I'm going to go and ask this computer program to construct to, let's see, where is it, to draw a tangent line to this curve at that point. So there's my tangent line. And you actually, let me make my tangent just a little bit longer so it's real easy to see. There we go. As our point moves along the curve, you can see that we've got tangent lines that have positive slopes. Oops, if I could get it to stop right in the right place in there. Now we've got tangent lines that have negative slopes, so the intermediate value theorem tells you that if you're going to go from a positive value to a negative value, you must, um, there we go, have a point that's equal to zero. There's a tangent line that has a slope of zero, a horizontal tangent. Now our slopes are negative and hitting zero again down here at the minimum point, if I can make the computer do that. All right, well you can imagine that this tangent line could be horizontal down here if we could get this point to be exactly on the right place, but I can't get that to happen. Um, and then we've got positive slopes again. So now, if I ask for a measurement of the slope of this line, okay, and here's our, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Here's our number. Okay, now the number there that you see in black is the slope of that tangent line. And as I grab the point on the curve, you can watch the slope change. So if I get all the way back over here, let's talk about this as we as we see things changing. We've got positive slopes. 14.1 is a pretty steep slope. You'll notice that those slopes get smaller. Still positive, getting smaller going to go through zero. We just went through it. Now we've got negative slopes. Negative, 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 negative. And then we've got positive values again. So let me see if I can make things happen the way I want them to next. All right. What I want to do is a measurement transfer. I'm going to get this number, which is our slope, transferred to a point on the y-axis. There we go. So I should see now, when I grab this point, I hope I should see, there we go. There's the point coming down the y-axis. You'll notice that we've got a slope value of 6.2 at this point, and if I were to get the coordinates of that ordered pair, we'd see that it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, just a little bit more than 6. That, that y value at that point matches the slope value of our derivative function. Now you can see what happened there. We had the slope coming down, now it's negative. The point's down below the x-axis, back to positive. All right, now, when we discuss that the derivative, we can see the derivative values changing. We can see the slope values changing. So we can think of the derivative as being a function derived from our initial function, our cubic function. So I'm going to construct a line perpendicular to the y-axis at that point. Okay, so along that horizontal line we have all points that have the same y-coordinate. And then I'm going to construct a line perpendicular to the x-axis 
through the point on my curve that keeps mo moving. And then every point on this vertical line has exactly the same x coordinate. If I then ask the computer to label the intersection point of that line and that line, and then we're going to hide some of these things to get them out of our way. Let's hide that, and let's hide that vertical line. Alright, what we should see now, again, everything is kind of based on this point on the curve. What we've got is an ordered pair there for this point right here. The x-coordinate matches the x-coordinate of the point on the curve and the y-coordinate of that point matches the y-value of the point on the y-axis, which is the slope of the tangent line. So now, watch the path that that point travels. It's going down, whoops, jumped too far. It's going to cross the x-axis, got it to stop on the x-axis. Now it's going below the x-axis, we have negative y-values and see if I can make it happen on this end. Going to get really close. Yay! See, if there is a point where the y value is zero there. All right, and our point now should be headed up above the x-axis because our slope values are positive. All right. Now, if I go back and show you the locus of that point, and let me grab it so I can actually see the point. All right. If I show you, where is it? It's here. The locus of that point as this point changes. Look at what we've got there. That black curve, which looks like a parabola to me, shows us the path that the other point traveled. The x-coordinate of every point on this black curve matches the x-coordinate of our point of tangency and the y-coordinate of every point on the black curve is the slope of this tangent line that I'm moving around. Now, the reason I went through all of that to, to, you know, all that painful construction there to show you this is I want you to kind of ask yourself, does that black curve appear to be the graph of a function? And I hope you'll say very quickly that yes, that, that curve does pass the vertical line test. It is a function. This locus curve that we have is actually the graph of the derivative of our cubic function. So there's a little visual evidence there that a derivative actually does result in a new function.